All praise is due to Allah who has said, related or mentioned in His most exalted and most noble and most mighty scripture. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من رأيكم وجنة عرضها السماوات والأرض وعدة للمتقين So Allah says, uh, says to us حيسن وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من رأيكم حيسن literally to forgiveness from your Lord when the exegetes, they remind us that there is a an unmentioned phrase here. And specifically a verb, وَسَارِعُ and not a verb, a, a sentence, وَسَارِعُ لَا مَا يُوجِبُ رَحْمَ مَغْفِرَةً بَرَبِّكُمْ Hasten to that which leads to forgiveness from your Lord. In other words, based on various opinions, hasten to Islam or the actions of Islam. But more generally, hasten to implement the commandments of Allah as the end of the verse will remind us and hasten to avoid those things that are prohibited. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ لَرَبِّكُمْ وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَا يُوجِبُ مَغْفِرَةً لَرَبِّكُمْ in other words, brothers and sisters, we should not play around with our religion. We should not be those who procrastinate, procrastinate rather, in doing the things we know we should be doing. We should hasten to do those things we know we should be doing. Not when I get married, I put hijab on, or when I get married, I'll get serious about this, that, or the other. When I'm old, I'll go to Hajj. Old age is not promised to you. After I buy my house, I'll pay my zakat. This is procrastination. And Allah is telling us to hasten. Hasten to those things which bring about forgiveness, which lead to rather forgiveness from your Lord. We should ask ourselves, how great is the reward? The reward is mentioned immediately after. Wajannatin, in a paradise. The, the indefinite conveys the meaning of multiplicity. So there's one more than one. So Allah Ta'ala doesn't say, Wajannati, Wajannatin, Jannatu Firdaus. Jannatul Ma'wa, Jannatul Na'im, Jannatul Ali. Many, there are many paradise, and each and every one of them is expensive. Arduha, Samawatu wal Samawatu wal Each and every one of them is more expensive than the expanse of the heavens and earth. There's more than one, and each and every one of them is more expensive than the heavens and earth. And we we know the delights that are contained in them, if they're in. So if the reward is that great, who would ever procrastinate? If the reward is that great, who would ever hesitate? If the reward is that great, who would ever take a chance on missing out on that reward? Who would take a chance on missing out on that reward if the reward is that great? وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْعَرْضُ وَعِدَّةٍ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That's been prepared for those who are righteous. And taqwa, and so to support the opinion وَسَعِرُ إِلَى مَا يُجِبُ عَلَى التَّفْسِيرِ مَغْفِرَةً مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ The righteous deed, عَمَالَ الصَّالَحَاتِ or مَأْمُرَاتِ and avoiding and manhiyat, avoiding the things that are forbidden, hastening to do the things that we've been commanded to do. What is the basic definition of taqwa? Implementing the orders and avoiding the prohibitions. So Allah Ta'ala Ta is telling us to hasten <coughs> to implement the orders. Don't play around. 
Don't play around. As Allah mentioned in the Hadith Quds, Ya Ibadi, Inni khalaqtuka al-ibadati fala tal'a. Oh my servant, I've created you for my worship. Don't play around. Don't play around with your religion. Play with your children. Play with your spouse occasionally. But don't play with Allah's religion. Don't play with Allah's religion. Hasten to your prayers. And some of the me mentioned in Fara'id. Hasten to fulfill your obligations, starting with the prayer. Hasten to fulfill your obligations. <coughs> hasten, hasten to avoid those things that are forbidden. Not next week, not, not next month. Next week, next month is promised to no one. How many people do we all know recently who passed away? Some of them at a young age. Some of them suddenly. Perfectly strong, healthy. The next minute, they're sick. May Allah cure all of our sick folks. But tomorrow is promised to no one. So we should hasten today. Some people reference in terms of the magnitude of Allah's mercy and forgiveness. The hadith of the man who killed 99 people. And then he never did a good deed in terms of his, the, the fara'id. He never prayed. He never fasted a day of Ramadan. This was before from the earlier people. But whatever fast was incumbent for his ummah, he never undertook it. He never gave any charity. But he did one thing. Once he went to the learned man, and the learned man told him, first he went to the, the, the worshiper, the abid. So he does a lot of worship, but he didn't have much knowledge of the religion. So after he killed the 99 people, and most of us know the story, but repetition... Is, is good pedagogically. It's a good teaching tool. So he went to the Abid, I killed, what did you do? Is there any forgiveness for me? What did you do? I killed 99 people. Uh, how could you? You're a terrible guy. You, 99 people? How? No way. <laughs> then 100. He killed him too. Then he asked the people, is there any forgiveness? And they said, go to the Alam. And this is one of the hadith that emphasized the virtue of knowledge. And he went to the alim, the learned man. And he asked, is there any forgiveness for me? And he said, what's between you and forgiveness? Allah forgives all sins except, except shirk, idolatry. He didn't say that. It's interjected by me. It's not part of the hadith. Oh, but, go but this land where you're doing all this killing is a bad land. Go to the, there's another land. It's a good land. There are righteous people there. Go and join them. And worship Allah along with them. And so what did the man do? He immediately set out. وَسَارِئُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ He immediately set out. He never prayed, never fasted, didn't give any zakat. But he immediately set out for that good land. And he died halfway. And the angel of mercy and torment disputed who would take his soul. They measured between the two lands. And he was found to be closer to the good land. And the angel of mercy took his soul. The one thing he did do, he didn't tarry, he didn't linger, he didn't procrastinate, he didn't hesitate, he didn't wait for tomorrow, he didn't wait for next week, he didn't wait for next year. He immediately set out for the good land <coughs> and he was forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, hasten. And this Jannah is waiting for us. Jannah is waiting for us. So the question is, do we want to be amongst his people? That's the question we should ask ourselves. And we should be serious in the answer. And if we find that the answer is other than what we would like it to be, we should immediately work to change our situation, to change our affair, to get serious about our religion, brothers and sisters. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عُرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْعُرْضُ وَإِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ So Allah encourages us to hasten to do the things we should be doing to avoid the things we should be avoiding and then He describes the reward Jannah 
and the expansiveness of gender. Which brings another point. Why do some people, with all of that expense, we mentioned four, each and every one of these paradises is more expensive than the expense of the heavens and the earth. Why would we only want ourselves and people who see us land the way we see it to get in? You have people, anyone who doesn't see the Islam the way they see it, they're going to hell. Going to hell. Munharif. Muqtada. Anything to get them into hell. On a technicality. Anything to get people into hell. On a technicality. We should be wanting everyone to get in. There's plenty of room for everybody. It's not as if there's a little box and there's only a little bit of room, then maybe we can understand. Not really, but perhaps. But with all of that space, why wouldn't we want as many people as possible to get in? Many of us, we need to ease up. And we need to, to, to have a good opinion of Allah. And understand that Allah Ta'ala knows the hearts. And perhaps Allah knows something we don't know about a person. Or perhaps what a person might be doing that we think is wrong is actually right. Because we don't know their madhab. We don't know what proofs they might have. We don't know the foundation of their action. We just assume because it's not like ours. And many of us don't even know our own madhab. To be perfectly honest. But we assume we know ours, and we assume we know the next person with all of the details and intricacies that a thousand or fourteen hundred years of scholarship will give birth to. <coughs> all of the divergence within parameters that fourteen hundred years of scholarship will give birth to. And then when we start to study, we discover the thing that we might have consigned someone to hell based on. In our minds, we can't consign anyone anywhere, but in our minds was actually something that was acceptable in the religion. We just hadn't studied it yet. We hadn't learned about it yet. So Allah Ta'ala says that this paradise is waiting, is prepared. Then He gives some descriptions of the muttaqeen. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْقَعْضِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ So the first description he gives, those who spend. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ Rather it's easy or difficult. Rather it's whether they're rich or their means are strength. If you lose your job, you get laid off, that happens from time to time, especially in this part of the world. Don't stop spending. Just spend less. But don't stop spending. They spend when it's easy, they spend when it's difficult. And uh, another interpretation if despite their disposition, some people are just plain stingy. And were that not the case, Allah will not say, Whoever can avoid the stinginess of their soul. Some people are stingy. Spin whether you have a magnanimous, generous spirit and disposition. Some people love to spin, they give. Right? The, the, Wife has to stop them from writing checks. Like, don't. Not this time. I <coughs> uh, can't help it. Some people are very generous. Some people are stingy. And so what Allah is saying, overcome yourself. Overcome your spouse, your, yourself. Don't give in to the, 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 the demands of your disposition. And this Islam is about conquering, gradually, overcoming what we might be predisposed towards. Not just instantly, 
But gradually, and, and him the tahallum. Forbearance comes through being forbearing over time. So, and even it's mentioned, to break this thing, you just just give a little bit, a little bit, until that becomes easy. So you put a dollar in, you have a hundred thousand in the bank, but you want to hold on. It's, you don't know how the economy is going. Things are uncertain. But just give a dollar until it becomes easy. And then give five, then give ten, until it becomes easy for you. Well, everyone should work against the negative proclivities of, the, of their soul. And this is how we control and vanquish the negative, those negative proclivities. By working against them. If we give in to them, then what, what is the point? Islam is not about making excuses. It's not about making excuses. It's about working to overcome those things that we might be inclined to make excuses for. You hear people, you know, that's just the way I am. Like, why would you talk to him or her like that? Well, that's just the way I am. You know, I can't help it. You better start learning how to help it. You better start challenging yourself. Because Yom Al-Qiyamah, I guarantee you, you're not going to stand before Allah Ta'ala and say, that's just the way I am. I couldn't help it. I guarantee that much. So condition yourself in this world. Challenge yourself in this world. And Islam is a challenging religion. Always has been and it always will be. Islam will challenge you. It will make you cry. It will make you cry if you take it seriously. Because the bar that it sets, it doesn't get lowered. If you strengthen your legs and jump over the bar, or it's not going to happen. That bar is not coming down. Some people want it to come down. But it's not coming down. We need to challenge ourselves. To raise ourselves to that level. Because only when we as a community have raised ourselves to that le level can we raise up those of, around us. Islam says, don't be a racist. Right? There are a lot of racist Muslims. Inshallah, none in here. But they're out there. No, Islam says, don't be a racist. Islam says, don't be a miser. Islam tells us, don't, have, don't be merciful to your children. You think these politicians are cutting money for a single mother struggling to get a little help with food stamp or wick? to buy milk for their babies. These heartless people, they don't, they don't care about them. They're totally divorced from their reality. They don't care about them. We should care about them. We should be a charitable community. And by, by honoring that standard, when, 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 so Allah here, the first thing, the righteous, He talks about spending. Later in this chapter, or earlier, I'm excited. But Allah tells us, You will never attain to righteousness until you spend, or we can say, Pure goodness, beer. Kalimatun jam'adi, jamil khisal al khayr. You will never attain to pure goodness until you spin from what you love. So again, Allah is challenging us to challenge ourselves. So we want to give the, the, the old clothes with the patches on them when they make the clothing dry. No, you keep the patched up clothes and give that dress or those that suit that you love. Give your favorite suit. See, Allah is keeping the bar high. From what you love. From what you love. So rather it's easy or difficult, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're in easy times or you're in 
constrained times. Spin. And they, they refrain their anger. They, they restrain, rather. They restrain their anger. And sometimes we, we're justifiably mad. Even if you can translate rage as rage. We're enraged. But if we swallow that, again, we're overcoming ourselves in that situation. And that elevates us. That purifies us. Our Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned, Whoever restrains their anger and they are capable of venting it. They're perfectly justified in venting it. But if they restrain it in that situation, Allah will fill their hearts with security and faith. There are a lot of insecure people out here these days. A lot of insecure Muslims. The Prophet وسلم, is telling us one way we can gain security. Restrain the anger. The next time you're ready to go off on your wife, or you're ready to go off on your husband, wives go off too. <coughs> Think about it. Swallow that anger. Restrain that rage. Fight against that impulse. Use this impulsive, something we do without thinking. Think about it for a minute. Make the ta'awud. Change your position. You're standing, sit down. Go make wudu. There's a consequence, as we mentioned earlier. There are rewards for our actions. We're not doing things in a vacuum. We do this and we just did it. No, we do think there are rewards for what we do. There's, there's a, 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 a change station for us. There are greater rewards for us. There is nearness to our Lord. There is the company of the elect. There are all sorts of amazing benefits for us. And there's love. There's the love. What's at the end of the verse? And they forgive people. Brothers and sisters, life's too short to be running around here holding grudges against people. We should be quick to forgive as long as our forgiveness isn't squandering someone's rights. But we should be quick to forgive people. We should be quick, we should be the quickest people to forgive. We should be the quickest people to be able to brush things off, as they say, to just brush it off our shoulders. That's who we should be as individuals and as a community. That should be our characteristic. Well, our feet are in the nest. Allah Ta'ala described, or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam describes Allah. What? Well, our feet From this root, I am fat wow. Allahumma inna ka afuun to hibbul afwa fa'afu anni. Ya Allah, you embody pardon. Pardon me. You love to pardon. Pardon me. If that's our Lord, shouldn't we be striving to adorn ourselves with that characteristic? <coughs> shouldn't we be loving to be a human reflection of that characteristic, that godly characteristic? And many, many others. And so Allah says, What Athena and Inas. And those who pardon people, what's the payoff? <coughs> Amongst other things, Wallahu yuhibbul mahsineen. And Allah loves those who do good. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that love is in like any love we can even begin to describe. The love of the divine. Wallahu yuhibbul mahsineen. So we should strive to be amongst the people of Ihsan. We should strive to be amongst the people of pardon. We should strive to be amongst the people who, can, who, who restrain their anger. We should strive to be amongst the people who spend regardless of our circumstances. 
May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. May Allah Ta'ala strengthen us, help us. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us to, to work on ourselves. It's not easy, brothers and sisters, especially now in this day and time. When the minions of Satan are, have been unleashed, perhaps in ways never seen in human history, but not in ways we cannot overcome. There are still righteous people in this earth. There are God-fearing people in this earth. There are pious people in this earth. There are people who worship their Lord. There are people who recite the scripture by night and by day. But we should look at them and be inspired to strive to be like them and to be inspired by the messages of the Quran. Alhamdulillah Rabban Rabban Alameen Wa Salatu Wa Salam Ala Sayyidi Al-Mursalim Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Salam Alhamdulillah Rabban Alameen Just to mention another characteristic we should have in these days and times from another verse Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran قُلْ بِفَضِّ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَعُوا Say in the grace of Allah, the gifts that He bestows upon us, and in His mercy and this, let them rejoice. We should be a joyous people. We shouldn't be foolishly optimistic. We shouldn't be unaware of what's happening around us or the dangers of our time. But despite the dangers of our time, despite what's happening all around us, we should be a joyous people. Why? Because we are the recipients of divine grace. Things that we receive from Allah Ta'ala regardless of our worthiness. If we receive based on our worthiness, some of us would have very scant provisions. All of us would have very <coughs> scant provisions. But Allah gives freely. Allah Ta'ala gives freely to us. Allah Ta'ala gives generously to us. Allah Ta'ala envelops us in His mercy. And this let them rejoice. And this let them rejoice. It's better than anything they can gather from this world. They can have all the money in the world, all the power in the world, all the influence in the world. There's a time when the money, the power, the influence is all going to run out. It's not going to benefit anyone. <laughs> so the people of money and influence that we are afraid of, we're in your have us so depressed because they have all the money and all the power and all the influence. What does Allah say about them if they're not right? And they get their book in their left hand. My wealth is of no benefit to me now. It doesn't assist me, strengthen me, strengthen me, enrich me in any way. So the big shots with all the power. My power, my influence all perish. Are those the people that have you depressed, brothers and sisters? You need to take a Quran joyous pill. Pick up your Quran and take a, a dose of divine elixir and rejoice. This is the dunya. It's supposed to be trials and tribulations and tests and hardship and then there's Eve. And then there's dinner with the family. Then there's the ibadah, the worship of Allah. There's the gathering of the brothers or the gathering of the sisters. 
So all of that hardship in the world is punctuated by amazing occasions for us to rejoice. وَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ In this let them rejoice. هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُ Allah مَوْفِيلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَانَ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَانَ مِنْ أَحْيَاءِ مِنْهُمْ وَلَمْوَانَ رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِكْ كُرُوبَنَا بَعْدِ الْفَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُوكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَحَّابِ ربنا فرق علينا الصبر وثب أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا فرق علينا الصبر وثب أقدامنا وتوثنا مسلمين وعفونا وفيلنا ورحمنا أنت ملنا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من قلبة الدين وقبر الرجال اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تعول به بيننا وبين معصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يحون علينا مشائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأقصارنا وقوتنا ما أحيتنا واجعله الوارد منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظالمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصعباتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا ببلغ علمنا ولا تصلت علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أحرم الرحم وعفونا وفيلنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين يا أيها الذين أنتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أكم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله